Welcome to August Family History Month 2020, digitally at Rotorua Library. As part of our in-library Family History Month program, we were going to host Thomas and Slay from the National Library of New Zealand. We are now pleased to be able to share Thomason's presentation with you online. Thomason is the Community Manager at DigiLNZ and is responsible for their outreach program. I'm going to leave it to Thomason to properly introduce what DigiLNZ is, but at a basic level, it is a resource that gives you access to over 30 million digital items from over 300 organisations in one place. You can access DigiLNZ from your personal device or from within the library. To access from the library homepage, click on eLibrary. Click Online Databases. Navigate to the heading NZ History and click on DigitalNZ. Thomason is now going to share how DigitalNZ can be used for family history research, including search tips and highlight new collections of interests to family researchers. Here is Thomason Slay. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa, no mai hari mai ki te kōrero. Uh, ko Thomas and Slay aho no te puna mātauranga o Aotearoa. E mahi ana aho ki te tīma atihi o Aotearoa. Uh, nā mihi, tēnā koutou katoa. Hi everybody, um, welcome to this presentation. Um, thank you for joining us digitally and what was intended to be a, a, a um, in-person presentation for Family History Month at the Rotorua uh, Library. But I'm really delighted to um, digitally give you a bit of an introduction to Digital New Zealand, very apt. Um, and hopefully this will be useful for you in your um, the whakapapa research and genealogical research that you're undertaking. Um, so what I'm going to do today for just about 20, 25 minutes, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the website Digital New Zealand, highlight some collections that you may or may not know about that are uh, maybe of interest, and give you a few search tips for searching the site and finish with a few plans that we have for the future that you may be interested in about how we're going to develop the site. So I'm just going to share my screen and basically um, kind of talk to the site as I navigate it. So hopefully you can all see that and that's all good. Um, so this is Digital New Zealand, digitalnz.org. We are a website that's coordinated um, and managed by a team at, that's part of the National Library, Te Puna Mātauranga o Aotearoa. And how the site works is basically, as our tagline says underneath our title there, we bring together 30 plus million um, digital items from lots of different collections around um, the motu and make them searchable on one website. Um, so we will bring together material as long as it has what we call a digital object. So that has to be a thing, an image or, an, or a piece of audio or a video or something that you can actually access online. And if it is about New Zealanders, um, New Zealand subjects or issues or communities, um, or was created in New Zealand um, by a New Zealander or a New Zealand community, that's our, our kind of content remit. Um, so what can I find here? Let's do a quick search and I'll give you a sense of what you can find on the site. So I was actually just in my preparation was searching for some of the um, areas around Rotorua to see what we had um, on Digital New Zealand uh, in relation to uh, the area that many of um, the people coming to this presentation would be from. So I'm just searching on Roto Iti. So you can see here on a very broad search, we're bringing up um, a lot of different content. Here on the All tab, we've got um, 43,000 things. And then across the tabs, across the top here, you can see um, the different subject, the different media types. So images, audios, videos, um, and in the more section, sorry, I'm just gonna, you can see other types of content as well. So newspapers, archives, data, etc. And if I scroll down, you'll get a sense of what I mean by the collection, the items coming from all over New Zealand. So we've got images coming through here from the national, from Auckland libraries, um, from the National Library, Alexander Turnbull Library. We've got a whole lot of Auckland Library stuff. Let's see what else we're bringing up here. Um, some research and data coming through, some stuff from the Ministry of Culture and Heritage. Um, this is a very broad search, so you can get a sense of the very broad kind of material that we're bringing back. Um, and so we bring together collections that are probably probably quite well known to you um, as genealogical researchers. So um, big institutions like Auckland Museum, um, Dunedin Public Library. I'm just opening the content partner drop down here to show you, a, uh, give you a sense of where all this information is coming from. 
Um, but we also have smaller collections that you may or may not be aware of. Um, so things like, uh, uh, what have we got coming up here? MTG Hawke's Bay, one item from there, which is obviously the institution in Napier. Um, Nelson Photo News is a digitized collection um, of the photo news publication from Nelson. I believe Nelson Libraries digitized that. So Digital New Zealand is kind of a great way of uncovering material that you may or may not be aware of, but also kind of building context around um, items. So what I'm going to do is show you once you find an item, so say you're interested in this piece here from the Nelson Photo News, you click on that and then every item on Digital New Zealand has a page like this where we provide you with a little bit of information about it. Um, this is a great collection because it's got a lot of names have been described. And then we have some copyright information about how you can and can't use the item. Um, this is trying to be as sort of plain English as we possibly can to describe um, the usage. And then every item, you can either click here or you can click on the item itself and that will take you out of Digital New Zealand and away to our, what we call our Content Partners website. So this is the Nelson Photo News website and here you can generally get more contextual information, get a closer look at the item, um, there may or be, may, may be not more descriptive information about it. Um, yeah, and so that's how the site works. The idea being that Digital New Zealand is not a repository, so we aren't the holder of this material, but the site is kind of a conduit through which you can search for items, access them, and then sort of bounce out of the site onto um, another website which will hold further information about the items. Uh, I thought I would quickly highlight um, that we sort of sit in a constellation of other aggregators that may you may or may not be aware of. So Trove is the National Library of Australia's um, service which is similar to Digital New Zealand. Uh, here many of you um, as sort of savvy researchers will know you can search um, the digitized newspapers, um, as well as lots of other material being pulled together from lots of different institutions. There's also Europeana, which is um, similar to Digital New Zealand, but has a Europe-wide um, a Europe -wide remit. Um, and also the Digital Public Library of America is an, um, an organization in America which does a similar, um, has a similar project to Digital New Zealand and bringing together lots of material. So these are a few other kind of aggregators that you may um, or may not be aware of. Um, at about this stage of my presentations about Digital New Zealand, there's a little question that's bubbling away at the back of people's minds, which is, why wouldn't I just use Google to find this material? What um, purpose does Digital New Zealand serve in relation to Google? Um, and there's a few answers to that. So Digital New Zealand um, is really good at surfacing some collections that are quite tricky to find on Google. Um, and Google is often uh, changing its algorithm. So sometimes um, items will be really well indexed by Google and searchable, and sometimes they um, will kind of drop down in the Google results. So we're just really looking to provide a search service, an easy search service, and, and a Google-esque search service in terms of its uh, um, just keyword searching is the way you access the material, um, but one that's kind of reliable um, and unchanging so that the content is always um, available and in a very similar way. Um, and we also get a lot of um, feedback from schools and teachers that Digital New Zealand is really great in the sense that it has a very clear um, pathway to reliable resources um, and trustworthy uh, partners. So it's great for students in the sense that it, that relationship between the content and who has um, provided it on online is very, is very clear. Um, so yeah, Google's obviously great for finding heaps of stuff, but Digital New Zealand kind of works in concert with Google to make sure that smaller collections um, and collections that are less accessible on Google can be found really well, um, really well via the site. So that is my brief introdu introduction to the site. And now I'm just going to spend about 10 minutes um, showing you a few collections that you may or may not be inter uh, be aware of that may be of interest um, to, and this will give you a sense of the type of content that you can fi find on Digital New Zealand um, and also will probably cover some search tips along the way as well. Um, so one that I was just looking at this morning that I always uh, really love having a search through 
is um, Trove actually have did a really impressive digitization project um, a few years back where they digitized uh, Pacific the Pacific Islands Monthly um, magazine. Um, so I'm just what I'm doing here is I'm searching through all of our content partners so that I can filter down to Trove. So I'm looking for T, and here we go. I'm going to click Trove, um, and I'm going to click Apply Filters here, and that will filter my results just onto the Trove collection. And you can see here a lot of Trove um, that we have on Digital New Zealand is the Pacific Island Mo Monthly Magazine, which was printed between 1930 and 2000. And it has really Pacific-wide coverage. Um, it was a really unrivaled source of information about current affairs, agriculture, transport, communications, local people and their life and customs, um, commodities and geography. I'm quoting here from a blog post um, written by Tro Trove. And the PIM, as it's called, is also a wonderful means of tracking down elusive names. So it's all um, keyword searchable. It's been what we call OCR, so optical character recognition. Um, so you can search by names in the collection. Um, and you can see the emergence of particular people as they become important in island politics, business or society. So this is um, fully digitized, text searchable, a really rich collection that's made available via Trove. Um, so I'm just going to click on an item here. Again, we go to the item page, what we call it on Digital New Zealand with a bit of information about it. And then we click on here to go out to Trove and you can actually look at the detailed, um, I think it's a PDF of the page in the magazine. Um, so this is a very rich resource um, that's been around for a little while. You do have to s jump through a few more hoops to get there if you view it, the digital library will go out to the item on Trove's site. And here it is. They have a very nice interface here about um, an artist, it looks like. And along here we have the text that's been um, pulled out from the document. So that's Pacific Island Monthly. Um, another great uh, collection that we've just recently harvest, harvested, um, harvested is one of the verbs, we have these great verbs that we use to bring the data from the collection onto Digital New Zealand. Um, we have recently harvested the Presbyterian Research Archive. So uh, I'm just again going to use this, con oh, I'm again going to use this content partner filter here to go down to P for Presbyterian and filter by their collection. Presbyterian Church of Aotearoa, New Zealand. So I just click apply filters and that will um, refine my search to their collection. So this is sort of over, yeah, over 12,000 items. The Research Centre Archive derives from the Historical Records Committee, which was established in 1927 to sort of encourage the preservation of the church's records. Um, and the archive is really rich. It holds documents from the General Assembly, committees, foreign missions, local and national um, Presbyterian women's and youth organisations, parishes. It's very varied um, and also has the personal papers of ministers and prom prominent Presbyterian laymen and women from around the country. So I was just having a search through this this morning. Some of the items have names, some don't. So the description is kind of varied, um, but you can search by name and bring up kind of interest, a few interesting items. Um, there's a lot of kind of collections of people, groups and gatherings and um, yeah, and as I said, they're foreign missions as well. So that material is both in newspaper form um, and images. Um, there's a few other items, a few, yeah, newspapers and images are the two main format types for this. Um, but that's a really rich collection that's just recently been digitized. Um, it's kind of an example of lots of um, small institutions who have had digitization funds to make their material accessible online, which is um, thankfully kind of happening more and more every day. So this gives you a sense of going out to the item on the Presbyterian Church's site. And here we have it. With a few names, um, named people there. And a few more interesting collections. So um, the National Army Museum is a really fantastic collection. Um, we harvested this collection onto Digital New Zealand uh, maybe six months ago. So again, I'm going to use the content partner filter here 
to go to the National Army Museum. So this collection is particularly fascinating um, because it was a project, I believe, that the National Army Museum undertook in order for the World War I centenary. Um, but it's really, it, they digitized all of the um, soldiers' personal photograph albums. So it has this really a fascinating um, kind of view of World War I uh, seen through the eyes of the soldiers in this sort of um, diaristic kind of mode, which is quite different from a kind of formal um, historical take. Um, so it's also interesting in that you will be able to go through the, from the individual photographs here on Digital New Zealand when you go through to the National Army Museum site. Um, you can see the photograph album that they're actually a part of, so you get that kind of wider context. So if you go from here and then click down here on the album that they belong to, you can see here how the images sit within the wider context of the album. So again, some of these have names, um, some of them don't, sort of varied depending on the information that's that came with them and how they've been described. I'll just do a quick name search to give you a sense of, I'm just kind of searching on names as that's often a sort of um, a genealogical approach. So there's a few Johnsons there. Yeah, it's a really fascinating collection, sort of a personal, personal collection. Um, and Finally, um, I thought I would show you um, another really great genealogical res resource. Um, so the Canterbury Museum um, has made available, I'm just getting rid of Johnson up here. So the Canterbury Museum has made available the digitized um, McDonald Dictionary of Canterbury Biography. So um, this collection, was created by, uh, I think I've written down his first name here, G.R. MacDonald. So he had a really strong interest in history. Um, and he took up the job of kind of collating a biography of, um, of kind of colonial Canterbury. So I'll just filter to Canterbury Museum. Do, 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 do. So the, the biography, um, the dictionary was compiled between 1952. Oh, that's not a good look, lots of broken thumbnails. It is one of the, a relatively familiar side on Digital New Zealand, but we're always working to fix those kind of things. So this is, um, <clears throat> uh, this dictionary was compiled between 1852 and 1864, and was comprised of 12,000 index cards with biographical information on over 22,000 people. Um, the dictionary took about 12 years to complete, and it's a really rich kind of genealogical research about people in the Canterbury region um, from all different strata of societies, society. Um, the information included goes beyond the basic facts and offers a rare insight into the lives of early residents, the businesses they founded, um, the institutions they were prominent in, and the areas that they lived. Um, so I did a quick search on PASCO when I was looking at this this morning, um, and I found this quite interesting. Um, so these are the actual index cards. So this is on Digital New Zealand. Then you click to go out to Canterbury Museum and this one was uh, about a Mr. Pasco. It says he made quite a sensation with his acting in the licensed something show. The play was Littleton's Money, Lighton's Money, and he played the part of Evelyn. He had only appeared in something, something, something until then. Soon after this, greatly daring, he made, he took the part of Othello in the touring company play such and such and so the Littleton Times had a crushing notice saying he had undertaken something far beyond his powers so <laughs> that's a bit of a cruel a cruel bow for Mr Pascoe but it's kind of an illustration of how the dictionary has this kind of um, interesting information that's been sourced from all sorts of material from newspapers and um, from all sorts of sources and brought together so again that's searchable by name um, a really rich resource of um, kind of mid 20th century uh, life in, in um, Canterbury. 
So those are just a few collections that you may or may not have known about. Um, as I said before, Digital New Zealand has this kind of rich um, way of bringing together both small collections um, and larger institutional collections to kind of build context around people, around places, um, around events um, from all sorts of kind of historical sources. Um, I'm going to send just quickly five minutes. You have, will have seen um, a, the way I was searching using keywords and um, filtering by content partner um, and uh, the using the, the tabs across the top to kind of filter also by media type. You could also use all the kind of Boolean search um, tools on Digital New Zealand. So and um, and not. Um, let's, let's put this in. Um, and the other search terms, um, a Boolean search uh, uh, um, some queries that you will um, be quite familiar with from other from other search services. Um, you can also use our explore page, which is kind of a way of dipping into the material. We've kind of broken it down by media type here, um, by usage. So this is if you're looking for material that you can use commercially or um, that is out of copyright. Also by date. Um, you can filter by date here and by place and content partner. So there's a way of kind of the explore pages provides you a way of kind of cutting into the material in ways that might be useful to you as well. I would say quickly that metadata, because it comes from so many different places, the data that describes items on Digital New Zealand is relatively varied. Um, some things are very richly described, some things are very um, sparsely described. So I would encourage you to kind of always play with your search terms um, reduce your search terms, um, choose, try different words, try different combinations. Um, there may be a way of kind of finding material that's not at first um, apparent. Um, but yeah, we encourage you to kind of play with um, the words that you put into the search boxes that as you may be surprised by what you bring back. Um, I've just got a few minutes, I believe, to round up. And I just wanted to highlight with you a few other cool things about the site. So one thing you can do on Digital New Zealand is create a story. Um, actually, I will stay on the homepage and show you. And stories are just basically a kind of board whereby you can bring together lots of interesting items. So say you're doing some genealogical research um, and you want to keep all your items in one place. Sorry about this strange white line that's appearing here. That's a little um, bug that we have on the site which we need to get fixed. Um, you can click and collect items together and keep them in stories. So there are little kitty where you can um, keep your material together. And if you want to, you can write something about them. So this is a story that someone's made um, about booksellers in New Zealand. Um, and they've kind of done a bit of a timeline here. They've been collecting together stationaries and books, uh, interesting bookstores um, and uh, other book related um, commercial enterprises. Uh, so if you're doing some genealogical research, you can um, keep together your pieces of research all together in one place. And um, I'll just quickly show you a, this is quite a good um, genealogical story. You can see the stories here also in the tabs across the top. So stories is, are here. Um, and this is some that some people have made about um, some of the ancestors. So this is um, the Flanagans of, of Nelson. So this person's kind of done some naming and some organizing of these people that they've found. Um, and you can, with stories, you can just keep them for yourself um, privately if you just wish to be, use them for your own personal research, research or you can um, make them public whereby people will be able to see them on Digital New Zealand in the same way that I'm seeing uh, the story here, or you can also keep them hidden, which is, means they won't be um, viewable on Digital New Zealand, but you can send the URL of the story up here to colleagues or friends and they will be able to see it if they have access to the URL. Um, so there's different options there. Um, but that we've, uh, genealogists find these as a useful tool um, for, keeping, um, for keeping research together, keeping things organized if they've found um, interesting items um, that they want to kind of keep for later. I should say quickly as well that Papers Pass, the digitized newspaper collection is available on Digital New Zealand to search as well. Um, I would say though that's not the entire what we call the Papers Pass corpus. I believe it's about 60% of Papers Pass, so not the entirety of the collection is available to search. Um, 
they uh, it's mainly a kind of infrastructure issue because it's such a vast material of co content but we are looking at making that fully searchable on digital New Zealand uh, hopefully in the near future so it's just another quick uh, story that someone has created so stories are used for for research for fun um for kind of s s serendipitous searching for all sorts of reasons um and I will just finally finish, I believe I'm just rounding up here, just to say that we do have plans in the future for Digital New Zealand um, with stories. One thing that we've been working on is providing the ability to upload your own images to stories. So this is one that someone recently made about the Piha Tramway, where they're bringing together lots of items from Turnbull Library, from Auckland Libraries. Um, and so we will have up here in the future a kind of button which says, add your own images. Um, and then you can add your own images to a digital New Zealand story if you have personal items that you want to kind of enrich the story that you're creating. Um, this is a tool that's really um, intended for family historians. So if you have uh, personal photographs that you want to keep together with some institutional collections, again, you can make these private or public. It's, um, it's totally up to you. Uh, you can kind of keep them together in this digital sort of reliable digital place um, and, then, and then share them with um, research colleagues or people that you're working with. Um, so stay tuned. Hopefully in the next couple of months actually we'll be um, releasing this new feature and that will make it possible for personal collections to kind of be intertwined with institutional collections um, on digital New Zealand. And that's, I think that's, that's about it. That's where I'm at. I hope you will enjoy the site. Um, we are really keen to hear from you. If you have any feedback, you can email us from our contact page. Um, hopefully I've kind of given you a good, very brief kind of rundown on how it all works. And um, yeah, we hope you all enjoy it. Uh, Namahi for listening and um, yeah, happy searching. Thank you, Thomason. Remember, our staff here at Rotorua Library are available to assist you in navigating this excellent resource. Thank you.